Hey everybody, so today we're going to take a break from the stage tutorials and we're going to focus on a mixing tutorial this time and this is on mid side EQ. Uh, what is mid side EQ? Well, it's very simple. Mid and side are two different aspects of your song. Mid basically means all the mono signal when both of the speakers are doing exactly the same thing at the same time. The side information is stereo information or what one speaker is doing that's different than the other, okay? So what I have here is I have what I would consider a relatively crappy mix. Um, and we're going to use mid-side EQ to clean this mix up. Let's go ahead and listen to what it sounds like. So mid-side EQ is powerful. And inside of live, you actually have mid-side EQ functionality in EQ8. So I'm going to take an EQ8 and drop it in the master track. Now it might not be immediately obvious, but the way you access the, the mid side processing is you go down to this mode area, you click on this drop down menu and you get L slash R, which is for uh, e equalizing left and right channel, and then you get mid side, okay? And then the way that you can switch between editing the mid or the side is just by clicking this button. So right now we're gonna focus on the side. Listen to this mix again. So this mix is going to suffer from a common problem that I, I hear in venues a lot, especially with younger new producers that don't really know how to prepare their music uh, for for the live show. What's going to happen is is this choir pad right here, this guy. It's going to sound like one note, if that. It's low, it's muddy. It doesn't have that much harmonic content. And so because of that, it's going to get buried in the venue. All you're going to hear is blah, 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 blah. So let's talk about how we can fix that. What I hear is there's a lot of, of, of low-mid energy in this mix. I mean, and that's a common thing in almost all mixes is that there's a, there's, uh, it's very difficult to dial in the low-mids um, in any mix. But you know, my process in fixing this is I would identify the frequencies that are kind of driving me nuts. And you can do that with EQ8 also by clicking on this little headphone, okay? When I click on this headphone and I move, I'm clicking on one of these bands, it'll actually isolate those frequencies. So let's try to figure out what frequencies we don't like in this mix. There we go. Right around, right around 200 is what I don't like. That's that mud, that that mud, that stereo mud, because we're working with the side channel, remember? We're working with just the stereo information. That mud in the mix. So listen to what happens when I remove a really drastic amount of this, about seven decibels. Now I can hear some more articulation starting. Now... This isn't enough, though. What I've also noticed is you might say, well, Anthony, now I, I used to hear this nice big stereo image of that pad, and I really liked the way that that sounded. So part of the process to mid-side EQ is if you're going to remove something, you're going to gut a mix like this, you definitely want to add those harmonics back in somewhere else, higher up on the frequency spectrum. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just have a broadband boost. Um, I'm just going to change... Let's actually take this over here. We're going to take um, number six out, and I'm going to turn this band into a low high or a high shelf. Okay, so that means I can turn up the highs or turn down the highs. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to compensate for the stereo information that I lost down low and actually add it back into the mix a little higher because I feel like this whole track is a little dark. And what I can do is remember I'm only messing with the stereo the stereo information, not the, the the mid information. So let's go ahead and listen to what this sounds like when I add, oh, I don't know, about three decibels, maybe four of high information here. And now I'm making drastic moves because I really want you to hear these. All right, let's check it out. So right away, man, I, I, I really hear everything just kind of pop out at me. I can hear the articulation. There's more depth to the mix. Let's go ahead and A-B this. All 
Okay, so so now you can see that we have this kind of we have this power going on. So that's my that's my side channel. Another thing that um, you'll find is pretty common is you know it's speakers work really really hard to make low end. If both of your speakers aren't firing at the same time in the very low, uh, it's just going to end up being muddy. You know, it, it, you know, bass travels through walls, travels through all kinds of stuff. If your speakers aren't firing at the exact same time in your low end, it's just going to make a muddy mix. So it's very simple. Just add a low shelf to your side channel, and unless there's really, really, really important information, low end happening in your mix that's, that's deep, especially in the sub level, just take it out. It doesn't need to be there. Um, so I'm actually going to just pull this down a little bit and now we're going to kind of just get like a as you can see we've got kind of a flat line going right here a lot of that stereo information that was down there earlier is going to be out of the mix and we've added remember we've added that harmonic content if there is harmonic content to the track and and each individual sound we've added it back in here okay so this is before and this is after before after Okay, and now let's take it a step further. What I can also do is in the mid channel, I can see now I can mess with the mid channel and not the side channel. So let's listen to some of the things. Something that I've noticed is that the, the, the drums are totally monoral. So in the drum track, there's no panning at all. It's right down the center. So I can mess with this separately. So I actually want some of that, some of that 200 hertz, just a little bit, you know, just a little boost there, give me a little more meat, uh, meat. That sounds cool. Another thing I could do is I could add some of that um, crystalline air around, I don't know, like, let's say like 13 and, so, and change. I'm going to just uh, add the cue and just make this kind of like one of those, I'm going to turn this back into a, a bell curve, and uh, I'm just going to add a little bit of brightness here. And remember, I'm using my headphones so I can just find that section. Where's that air at? There it is. I like that. Uh, maybe just a little bit lower. Around 14. Okay, so I've made a couple adjustments to the mid and I've made a couple adjustments to the side. So let's go ahead and listen at the... This is our, this is our end result. And now I'm going to turn it on. be a little bit too much brightness there. There we go. Okay, so as you can see, uh, you you can really, really, really make a dent in your mix and, and make it sound a lot better just by doing some really, really simple mid-side EQing. So that's pretty much it, everybody. Just a quick crash course in mid-side EQ. If you got some benefit from this lesson, consider pushing the subscribe button. And if you'd like to support the channel, there's a Patreon link at the bottom, uh, complete with uh, mentorship options with yours truly. Um, but anyway, much love to everybody and uh, enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you.